Mohamed for the introduction. It's a pleasure and honor to be speaking at this seminar. Uh, so today I want to discuss about the so-called equivalent tama wagner wall number conjecture with coefficients in Hecke algebra. So, so these form um, a complex web of interlocking conjectures. So I would like to start with concrete questions in one specific example. So fix for the moment p equal to 3. And I consider the following three eigenkast forms. So F1 is of weight 2 and level gamma 0, 14. And it is the eigenkast form attached to the elliptic curve of equation y square equal x cubed minus 7x minus 6. F2 is also of weight 2 and level 716. And this one is attached also to an elliptic curve. Uh, the elliptic curve y squared equals x cubed minus 67x plus 926. And f3 is of weight 4 and level 1640. And coefficients in a rather large uh, extension of q. And these three eigenkast forms are all congruent modulo p. So let me say a word about why I chose these one. Uh, I chose this one because they are congruent, but they are not obviously related in any other way. Meaning they are not of the same weight, at least this one is not of the same weight, so they do not occur in the cohomology of the same geometric object. Uh, also, uh, neither of them is free ordinary, so they do not belong to a common Hida family. And in fact, this one has A3 equal to 0, whereas these two has A3 different from 0, so they also do not belong to a Coleman family. So they are congruent, but apart from that, there are not many, there are not many relations between them. Uh, let me introduce a few uh, further notation. So, so for uh, F4, it means, for, for the one S4, it means congruence relative just to the Q, usual Q expansion. Yes. This is what you mean. Just yes. Yes. So, in fact, if you want to be more precise, because this one has not Q expansion in Z, there is a number field and a single prime over 3, such that this congruence holds. Ah, the coefficients. The coefficients are, are in a, an extension of degree 15, and there's a single prime in the uh, ring of integer of this extension over 3, such that, such that this congruence holds. More precisely. Is that correct? Uh, so let me introduce a couple, a few more notations. So Q infinity will be a uh, ZP extension of Q. Uh, gamma is Galois group. And as usual, lambda uh, will denote the complete group algebra ZP double bracket gamma. And we will be interested in uh, the variation and the special values of this L function. So more precisely, we consider the L, the L function of uh, Fi, twisted by some character chi, uh, evaluated at 1. And because I'm interested in theodic variation, I will remove the Euler factor at p, and I will quotient by some period. And here, chi is a finite order character of gamma. And I want to ask the following questions about these values. So, so first, can we make sense of them? In terms of algebraic objects, like in the person certain data conjecture, for instance, uh, so for F1 and F2, this is the Bloch uncertain data conjecture, but for F4, as many people know, this is the block cattle conjecture. So you, this notation means that you don't consider the factor above... The Euler factor at P is removed. Yes. And this is uh, important because it is not defined or because it, the conjecture should be just... 
I'm not, uh... So, I am going to state a precise conjecture. Yes. But the, the block cattle conjecture applies to any, well, the, the version of the block cattle conjecture that I will present applies to any partial L function. Um, second, can we predict something about these values? So, for instance, uh, can we predict their periodic valuation? Uh, and I want to distinguish these two questions because, for instance, the Bursch uncertain direct conjecture says that the periodic valuation of this special value is related to the order of Sha, but of course the order of Sha is hard to compute. So we express something hard in terms of something hard, and here I want to know if we can say something definite and easy about this periodic variation. Uh, three, because these forms are congruent, we could ask, are they congruent? Modulo P. And finally, four, are they related in any way? So can we exploit this congruence to say, using these values, can we say something for one i, can we say something for the other? So if we know the values for f1, can we say something about f2 and f3? Uh, So at least about question one, can we make sense of them? There is a very uh, definite answer in terms of the block cattle conjecture for the motif VF attached to a Wigan form F. So this is the motif constructed by Scholl in 1990. And in, and in terms of its uh, free realization, the petty realization, the RAM, and for MEP, the etal periodic realization. So the only thing that I will need is that inside uh, the petty realization, there is a class that I will, ca that I will call delta f. And what is delta f? It's, it's the path from the cusp 0 to the cusp infinity on the modular curve. And uh, thanks to euler poincare duality, you can see this as a class in uh, uh, the Betty realization of uh, Vf. And so let me state the so-called equivalent Tamagawa number conjectures with coefficients in lambda for the forms f. This is a conjecture due to Cato in 93. And it says the following. If you take an O lattice inside the etal realization, and if you put H, I, Iwasawa, to be the etal cohomology of spec Z with P inverted with coefficients in T tensor uh, lambda Iwasawa. Then, first of all, H2 Iwasawa should be torsion as lambda module. H1 Iwasawa should be rank 1 and all the other uh, HI should vanish. And second, 
there exists a class ZF inside H1 Iwasawa satisfying two properties. A, the characteristic ideal of H2 Iwasawa, which is defined because H2 Iwasawa is torsion, should be equal to the characteristic ideal of H1 Iwasawa over Zf. So these are all uh, lambda modules. So that's the first property. And the second property relates Zf to uh, special values of L function in the following way. You fix an integer n and an integer s between 1 and k minus 1, where k, I recall, is the weight of f. And then, first of all, you can project h1 Iwasawa in the etal cohomology of z with p inverted but with uh, roots of unity added, with coefficients in vf. Then you can localize this group at P. So this uh, gives the Galois cohomology of the extension QP uh, ZPS with coefficient in the same sheaf. Then there is a dual exponential map from this group to the Dideram 0 of uh, Vf, everywhere it's Vfp. And that is isomorphic to a certain space Sf, which is a space of cusp form on which the Hecke algebra acts by the eigenvalues of f. Tensor over f with fp gn. And here what are my notations? So uh, f as coefficients in a number field big F and uh, P uh, divides P. And Gn is a Galois group of this extension. So, so you have these maps and Zf is in this group so you can send it into that group and the first property, the first fact is that the notation uh, on the, the core, is it the question mark above the core? No, no, it's uh, isomorphic too. Ah, okay. Yeah. It's a description of, uh, an explicit description of this space. And so ZF is sent to a rational subspace. inside this PLX space. And furthermore, now that uh, we know it's in this rational subspace, we can tensor it with C. And there's, in fact, if chi is a finite order character of gamma, there is a period map, depending on chi, which sends uh, SF tensor with CGN to the Betty realization of F. And let me recall that there is a class delta F in here. And this sends ZF tensor 1 to the special value of L of the dual motive of F. Uh, twisted by chi and evaluated at S. So, this class ZF and the element H2 Iwasawa um, compute all special values of uh, the motive VF dual uh, twisted by chi and at the integers S. 
So that's the statement of the conjecture. And it, it answers, uh, it settles question one above. Can we make sense of these special values? Well, we can in terms of H2 Iwasawa and this class ZF. Uh, let me recall the following theorem, which is due to Cato in 2004. Uh, but in this conjecture one, in this conjecture one, uh, the statement one and two B are true. And under my hypothesis, so, so remains uh, statement 2a, so this statement. And um, Kato proved that the characteristic ideal of H2 Iwasawa divides the characteristic ideal of H1 Iwasawa over Zf under my hypothesis. And uh, in fact, okay. so the the property is, is it? So the one knows that this the the maps are such that it defines you more or less unique. So 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 what? Oh, so okay. So what what you mean? The meaning, the precise meaning of this theorem? So to be means that the image under certain yes. maps is equal to something, and this means just that the something is in the image. No, so, so Cato constructed a class ZF. Yes. He showed that the image under these maps is indeed um, delta F times the special value of the L function. Okay. And the map is also injective or not necessarily? Uh, so ma many of these maps are isomorphisms, but not all of them, of course, because this one's a lambda yeah, module yeah. and then you... But the injective, I ask about injective because... Uh, yes, it is injective. We could run yeah. Okay. Torsion yeah. Free. yeah. It is torsion free. So under under this mild hypothesis, actually H one I was Iwasawa is free over one. But is it always torsion free? It is always torsion free, of course. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. So with that conjecture and theorem in hand, I want to comment a bit uh, again on our forms F1, F2, and F3. So for them, it's actually not hard to see using Cato's theorem that conjecture one is true for F1 and F2, and that the special values, uh, so at s equal 1, for them are all periodic units. For 1 and 2. So using the theorem, it's not hard to uh, establish this statement. But, The special value of F3 at 1 is not a periodic unit. And so we see that, uh, first of all, special values are not congruent, even though never, this is never, this is always a periodic unit, independently of chi, and this is never a periodic unit. And so we see that uh, these values are not congruent. And we see also that insofar as these values shed light on these values, this cannot be an obvious process because of its discrepancy. <coughs> and so the question. Uh, okay. That's a, a question from Tokyo. Yes. <laughs> Say it again. So, so, are you claiming for all kinds? So these values are unknown. That's unit for all kinds? Yes. 
All guy, find out the character but, again. Uh, but uh, you are now considering the super singular case? Hmm? Yes. A, a, you say A3 equals zero? Yes. Is that okay? Isn't it? No? <laughs> That's wrong? Um, oh. This is not the, these are not the values interpreted by the periodical function, right? So periodical function for, for in a super singular case, for example, yeah. um, so plus minus uh, uh, periodical functions should be um, unique. That's okay, I think. So, yes. So, but Ted uh, Safarovich is non-trivial usually. Um, okay, anyway, anyway, so Takeshi said, so your one, two is not, not so good. No, no, it's, 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 it's that, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, you cannot read? <laughs> no, no, for a bit. Yeah, no. go ahead. Okay. Uh, okay, so in order to um, relate these values, we have to introduce Hecker algebra. So that's, that's what I'm going to do now. Sorry, a uh, question from Beijing. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned that some, some of them is ordinary, but some are not ordinary, right? No, 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 they are all not ordinary. Oh, no, 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 not ordinary. Okay, that's all, the all not ordinary. Yes. yes. Okay, okay. Uh, on the other hand, one of them has A3 equals 0, and the other two uh, have A3 different from 0. So one of them is infinite slow, and two of them are finite slow. Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so now, um, fr from now on, P is not 3 anymore, it's just any odd prime. And, and I consider rho bar uh, an irreducible modular uh, GQ representation, which is unramified outside the finite set uh, of primes, which I will denote sigma rho bar. And uh, I will also fix a, a finite set of prime sigma, which contains sigma rho bar, but which might be strictly larger. And I'm going to introduce the following Hecker algebra, T sigma. So this is the inverse limit on the weight of Hecker algebras of weight k. And here, T sigma k. Uh, is the reduced Hecker algebra generated by Hecker operators TL for L not in sigma, uh, generated over some discrete variation ring O. And this is inside the endomorphism ring of all modular forms of a certain level and weight less than K. Uh, So to rho bar uh, corresponds a maximal ideal M of this Hecke algebra. And I, I mentioned that the localization of T sigma at M is believed to be equidimensional of cruel dimension 4, and this is often known to be true. Uh, one more notation, if A is a minimal prime ideal of the reduced ring uh, T M sigma, then I will write R A for the quotient, the, the integral domain quotient T sigma, T M sigma over A. And uh, I would like to uh, briefly uh, draw 
these rings. So, so starting with, uh, with uh, RA, so we have an irreducible component like this. And, and what I've drawn here is more precisely the spectrum of uh, RA with P inverted. And if I want to draw the full spectrum of T and sigma, then maybe there's another, there's another irreducible component crossing the first, maybe something like this. And so the full uh, picture is uh, the spectrum of T and sigma <coughs> with P inverted. And because I've inverted P, these rings are dimension three, but I've uh, drawn um, surfaces. So <coughs> the meaning being that at any point on this surface, there's an extra dimension which corresponds to the cyclotomic deformation. the cyclotomic variable. So, so if this point corresponds to a modular form F, then conjecture 1 describes the special values of the L function on that line. And now if I uh, assume that I'm looking at my uh, F1 and F2 and F3, then it's easy to see that F1 and F3 are on different irreducible components. So conjecture one describes the special values on that line and on that line, but I want to relate them. So I, I need to move first on this surface and then from that surface to that surface. And that is, uh, that is the point of the equivalent Amagawa number conjecture with coefficients in Hecker algebra. So now I, uh, oh, one last uh, thing on, on the whole space. So can you say, yes. so what rings are you, are you looking for? So you said that there is this hacker ring T yes. sigma. Yes. And this is a localization of the hacker algebra. Okay. Yeah. Or completion or okay. And but then the the things that you describe are irreducible components. Yes. Okay. And what is the line that so, so the irreducible component? So where is it? Okay. So in fact R A is I mentioned four. Okay. So R A one over P is I mentioned three. Yes. So, so in fact, this RA is not a surface, it's a space, okay? Yes. But one dimension of this space is due to the presence of a possible cyclotomic twist. So there, all these rings are lambda algebra, where lambda <coughs> is this ZP double bracket gamma. So I, from my picture, I've removed this dimension, but you have to imagine that on each point, there is this line corresponding to a twist. So if F1 is this point, this point would be F1 tensor by some character chi. Uh, but it, is, it still lies in the irreducible component. It still lies in the irreducible oh, component. You do as if it is, okay. Oh, uh, no, the yeah. Picture was yeah. As if, you okay. doing uh, as if I were space. moving outside of it. No. All irreducible components are spaces, dimension three. Ah, okay. Okay. And there is no preferred way to cut down uh, dimension two thing. Okay. Well, that I don't well, Okay, so it's not just. Okay. So here is a conjecture, that's conjecture 2, and this is an equivalent Amagawa number conjecture but with coefficients in this uh, Hecker ring TM sigma. And one possible formulation is that there exists a Z sigma and a delta sigma, and for all minimal prime ideal a ZA and a delta A, delta A, such that, first of all, the natural projection from, from the Hecker ring onto RA induces 
an isomorphism from delta sigma tensor Ra with delta A, which sends Z sigma tensor 1 to ZA. And second, if lambda is a modular point of Ra, So if, if this is a system of eigenvalue of uh, an eigenvalue form, then delta A tensor with lambda Iwasawa should be canonically isomorphic to the following objects. You take the determinant of the complex, the entire cohomology complex of Z with P inverted with coefficients in some lattice, some Iwasawa lattice in the cohomology of uh, the modular form. And then there is uh, a supplementary term, which is this lattice, and you take the plus part, so the invariant part and the complex conjugation. So we should have the, this isomorphism, and such a canonical isomorphism, and this canonical isomorphism should send ZA <coughs> tensor 1 to the class ZF of the first conjecture and, and tensor with the dual of the delta class of the first conjecture. So meaning, meaning that if you take the period map of the image for lambda of Z8 and so on, for any modular point lambda, then this should be equal to the special value at P of Vf star 1 chi s. So, that, so if you remember the first conjecture, there was a, an extra class delta here, and now I have incorporated it on that side so that it disappears on this side. So, so this conjecture well, roughly states that this class Z sigma can compute all special values of all modular forms uh, appearing as points on the ring TM sigma. Which kind of object is supposed to be delta sigma? That's exactly the right question, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is delta sigma? So, of course, uh, yes, so this conjecture is quite meaningless if we don't at least propose a candidate for delta sigma and for the canonical isomorphisms appearing. So, so here is the answer. You take UP, a compact open subgroup into the in the adelic point of GL2 uh, outside of infinity and P. And define the completed homology of time level UP and coefficients O as the inverse limit on all U, UP, uh, U lower P of the homology of the modular curve of level UP, U lower P, U upper P with coefficients in O. So here UP is compact open in GL2 of QP. And I take the direct limit on all these levels. And uh, I point out that inside <coughs> this completed homology, there is a free module of rank 1, Z sigma, uh, module over the action of the Hecker algebra, which is generated by a certain class delta sigma, w w which is more or less, again, the path from 0 to infinity, but seen in this completed homology. And, and with this Z sigma, we are going to build the delta sigma. So delta sigma, at least a candidate for delta sigma, is the determinant of the Hecker algebra of the etal cohomology with compact support of Z with sigma inverted 
with coefficient in the Galois representation T sigma, uh, with, co uh, with coefficient in Hecker algebra, tensor the determinant of Z sigma, this Z sigma, uh, minus 1. And uh, this is how you should think of this object. So this, this is of algebraic origin or cohomological origin. So you should think of this as cohomological, as algebraic special value. You should think of this part as the part predicting the special value. And you should think of this part with the delta in it as the actual analytic special value. And so the conjecture, one way to um, rephrase the conjecture is to note that it amounts to uh, this part, the determinantal, determinantal part is canonically isomorphic to some module x sigma inside the total fraction ring of um, Tn sigma. <coughs> the second part, likewise, it's, I, there is a canonical isomorphism to some uh, module y sigma inside, inside this uh, total quotient ring. And so inside this total quotient ring, x sigma tensor y sigma uh, is equal to the Heck algebra. And so this statement, so, so we have a statement like this, and all these isomorphisms should be compatible with the maps uh, first from Tn sigma to an irreducible component, and from an irreducible component uh, to a modular point. That, that's a way, so a way to understand the conjecture is that this y sigma is the periodic variation of the actual special values, this x sigma is the periodic variation of the formula predict, predicting the values. This, this statement is that they are equal over the full Hecker ring, and this compatibility says that if they are equal over the full Hecker ring, they are equal at each modular point. Uh, that's how to understand roughly the conjecture. Um, so before stating a theorem on this conjecture, let me uh, illustrate it by going back once again to our example. Could you remind me what is the T subscript sigma? Yeah, so T, I, I actually, I, I meant to write it down, but then forget. So T subscript sigma, uh, is the Galois representation with coefficients uh, in the Hecker algebra. So it's the big Galois representation. So back to our forms F1, F2, and F3. So which belongs to different irreducible components, as I said before. 
Uh, so for them, sigma will be the set of prime 2, 3, 5, 19, and 41. And I will point out that the conjecture gives us two ways of computing special values now. Because if you want to compute special value, you can take the class z sigma inside delta sigma, and then you map it to uh, zf <coughs> tensor delta f star. Can you raise the top board so that you compare these? This, oh, sure. To uh, what the Oh. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So the first. Okay. So so the composition of these two isomorphisms, one to the useful component, then to the modular point tell you that z sigma has to go to zf tensor delta f uh, star, which for the period map maps to the special value with p removed. Uh, so in my case, s will be 1. Uh, but you can also take delta sigma inside z sigma and map it to some delta sigma f star uh, that will be inside uh, the Betty realization of the motif Vf. And then compute the special value with respect to this class. So, so maybe you tensor it with Zf. And that one is mapped through the period map, not to the same special value, but with the, the special value with all Euler factors at sigma uh, removed. So this L sigma. <coughs> is by definition the product for all prime in sigma over all prime in sigma of the Euler factor uh, at this prime L uh, times the full L, L function. So, so we see a difference. We see a difference in these two processes. And uh, exploiting this difference, we can now explain what we noticed earlier. Because if you take L equal to 41, then you will see that the Euler factor at L of the first of our modular forms uh, is not a free adic unit. <coughs> and uh, if you translate, so, so this means that this uh, L sigma uh, this uh, special value with uh, sigma uh, Euler factors removed, so this L sigma, will have a non free adic unit part here. But if you translate this in terms of um, the module Y sigma above, you will see that this means uh, that the module Y sigma. is not isomorphic to Tm sigma, which is perfectly fine in terms of the conjecture, because it, it's just x sigma tensor y sigma, which, which should be isomorphic to Tm sigma. So this means that x sigma is also not isomorphic to Tm sigma, but that's fine. Uh, however, The product of all Euler factors 
par deux modules à forme F3. That is a piano unit. And so, again, if we translate, the fact that y sigma is not tm sigma plus this statement, implies that uh, the, the periodic valuation of this special value uh, is strictly positive. And in fact, it implies that this periodic valuation has to be exactly equal to the periodic valuation of uh, this oil factor. So uh, this is very briefly speaking how the conjecture can relate the special values and the oil factors of one modular form to the special value and oil factors of another modular form in uh, um, under the hypothesis that they are congruent. So now let me state a theorem. So I remind you that P is uh, odd, and I, I, I will state the theorem under simplifying assumptions um, cho chosen for brevity. So assume that the Galois representation rho bar is subjective, so its image is uh, all of uh, GL2 of some finite extension of FP, and also that the local Galois representation rho bar restricted to QP is irreducible. And then there's a mild condition uh, at primes which are in sigma but not in sigma rho bar. And I, I, I will state it if needed um, in the sketch of proof. You didn't explain how you chose sigma. No, no, you, you, you choose sigma arbitrarily. Arbitrary. Arbitrary, yeah. But in the conjecture, I mean. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but for this theorem, uh, well, I, I can tell you the condition if you want. Do you want to? Well, I want to understand what this 41 is doing. Yeah, so um, the theorem will apply to, mm -hmm. to um, my example, of course. Mm -hmm. So, um, the, the condition is that if L is congruent to plus or minus 1 modulo P, so of course when P is equal to 3, this is going to happen every time, mm -hmm. um, uh, then you have to know something about the shape of the local Galois representation at L. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if L is equal to minus 1 modulo P, which is the case here, I guess, uh, the local Galois representation has to be reducible, mm -hmm. uh, which is also the case because uh, 41 divides only once 1640, so you are Steinberg at, uh, at L. Mm -hmm. okay. But if you had the modular form, so of course not with these conjectures, but with uh, a super singular, a super cuspidal, I mean, um, local general representation at 41, then the theorem would not apply. Um, you will, I mean, at least the proof will not apply. And, and four, uh, there exists a modular point of this Hecker algebra such that conjecture 1 is true. So let, let me remind you that conjecture 1 was the, the original equivalent of Magawa number conjecture of Kato. Then conjecture 2 is true. So the full equivalent of Magawa number conjecture with coefficients in Hecker algebra is true. And in particular, conjecture one is true for all modular points.
of T and sigma. So if you apply this theorem to our example, uh, as I mentioned, it's easy to check that the conjecture 1 is true for F1, and so it implies in particular that it is true for F2 and F3. But I should point out that conjecture 2 is stronger than the sum of conjecture 1 for all modular points. Because conjecture 1 for all modular points describes the variation just in this cyclotomic line, whereas conjecture 2 describes the, vari the variation on a full Hecker, uh, Hecker ring. So it's conjecture 1 for all modular points plus congruences between these values. So in the rem remaining uh, 10 minutes or so, uh, I will uh, briefly uh, sketch the proof. That's correct. <coughs> Eight minutes or so. So the proof proceeds in uh, three steps, three main steps. And the first step is uh, uh, descent. And this means, so this can be summed up in the following proposition. Uh, the modules x sigma and y sigma of the conjecture uh, are compatible with the mapped TM sigma onto RA and modular maps RA onto uh, lambda Iwasawa. In the following sense, um, X sigma tensor Y sigma is some module M inside the total quotient ring of TM sigma. So the conjecture says that it is TM sigma, but some module M. And you can specialize on the left and specialize here. And uh, this, is, uh, this is a commutative diagram. And same with uh, this map. So, so once you know the relative position of x sigma and y sigma, you know the relative position of our images at all modular points and at all irreducible components. And I should point out that neither these maps, this, uh, neither, I mean, x sigma does not go to xa and y sigma does not go to yA. But the tensor product goes to the tensor product. And uh, the idea of proof of this uh, statement. So is the tensor product of what? Uh, this is over T and sigma. And below is over. And below it's over RA. Oh, this is inside R R A. The is fraction the ring is a finite extension of. R A is an irreducible component of the. Ah, yeah, okay, okay, it's a minimal primary. Yeah, it's a minimal primary. <coughs> and and you have the same the commutative diagram for. Lambda Iwasawa, in which case this is over lambda. Yep. Uh, so, so this relies on the purity of the Galois representation <coughs> attached to modular forms. And some variant of Hiara's lemma uh, for completed homology. Because if you recall, uh, x sigma is something like a determinant of etal homology, y sigma is something leading in completed homology, and uh, these are the tools used for the first step. Uh, if we can establish this first step, then notice that uh, then 
it is enough to show that x sigma tensor y sigma contains tm sigma and that there exists a point, a modular point, such that our uh, very image for this modular point, so that is the modular point x, is lambda y sigma. Because if the containment was strict, then in this uh, commutative diagram, we would have a strict containment here. So, so once you know the compatibility of x sigma and y sigma, uh, you know it is enough to prove a containment and an equality on one point. So you are, we are going to bootstrap this equality to an equality at every point. But first, we need to prove this containment. So that's the second step. Uh, The second step is uh, the containment x sigma tensor y sigma here contains uh, tm sigma, and this is achieved by a total wide system method, meaning we construct a projective system of Artinian quotients of Tm sigma whose limit is a regular ring. So, for the benefits of experts, uh, in the original Taylor Wilde's formulation, this works only if um, in the minimally ramified case. And uh, in that case, uh, Taylor and Wilde uh, construct such a system and show that the limit is a regular ring. Um, but we don't want, so, so that would correspond to sigma is equal to sigma rho bar, and so that explains the uh, mild hypothesis on uh, L in sigma. Uh, minus sigma rho bar. So in the general case, uh, one needs to analyze the singularity of the local deformation ring at L in sigma, uh, not in sigma rho bar, to, to get this uh, result. So, so this is a telewise system in, uh, the, in Kissin's formulation. And in Kissin's formulation, in general, you don't get a regular ring. And I really need a regular ring, so I need this analysis, and so I need this hypothesis on uh, So the local L. ring you're talking about uh, uh, yeah, different from B. So exactly, I, I'm looking at the, the frame deformation ring of uh, rho bar restricted to GQL and different from B. And of course, you can be Steinberg at L and so on in that situation. Yes, 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 yes. 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 So, well, I mean, yeah. And, and in, in some, so so these uh, these uh, frame deformation this frame deformation ring are never regular rings. But they are irreducible components yes. might be, and uh, generally they are able to look at that. This is Jack Sultan. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, but still, I think the singularities are not understood. Even yeah. So I mean, oh, you are in dimension two. Sorry. Well, I'm, I'm in dimension, dimension two. two. Okay. And yeah. in my case, as soon as there is one singularity in an irreducible component, the method no, fails. Dimension so two should be fine. Yeah. But, yeah. So uh, that's step two. And so, what is the use of this regular ring? It's because now that I'm over a regular ring, uh, I can apply the Euler system method. So, 
the regular ring I will call B. B infinity. And in this way, uh, this produces uh, containment for many points of B infinity. So um, you can find many points S and, and make sense of this X, S and Y, S uh, such that you have such a containment and then you can deduce uh, that containment. Uh, and then you just appeal to hypothesis 4 and hypothesis 4 tells you that there is one point at which they coincide, so they coincide everywhere. I'm done, thank you. Okay, we will maybe start by Tokyo, then Beijing, and then Pierce. Yeah. Uh, are there any questions? So at the last point, why, why you need the regularity? Ah, um, in, in Iwasawa theory, so, so Carl Rubin observed that if you have, um, so, so you want to prove a main conjecture, so it's an equality of characteristic ideals. And Carl Rubin observed that if the characteristic ideals are, or maybe a divisibility of characteristic ideals, so he observed that if this does not hold, then you can mm. find a discrete variation range for, it, for which it is very false. And, and that will yield a good prediction. Mm. But if you are over a non-regular ring, then possibly something that is, there is no divisibility for the ring, but there is a divisibility at any image through a, to a discrete variation ring, because you just pass to the normalization, so maybe the non-divisibility is destroyed by normalization. Uh -huh. so, 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 I mean, um, he, he phrased in these terms, maybe this does not hold at any point, because at the point of singularity of this ring, this ceases to hold. And the Euler system method will not see this over TM mm. sigma. But if I go to B infinity, then I, I resolve the singularities so I can really detect that. So that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there more questions? Mm. Yeah, thank you. That's it from Tokyo. Okay. So Question from Beijing. Beijing? Probably stupid question. So in your step, wait, can you hear me? I can. Hear okay. You. So in, the, in your step one, uh, you said uh, you can. You need only to show one point to deduce. Uh, you need to show conjecture one at one point to deduce, deduce it for all the points. Yes. Uh, do you? Uh, you uh, maybe. maybe uh, uh, I, I would believe that if you need to show one point on each irreducible component, but is it true that you just? You just show one point on you know, over all whole space. How do you kind of pass through the intersection and go ah, jump to the other? Yeah, so, um, so I can repeat the question maybe. So, so, so the question was, um, I claim in the theorem that if there is uh, equality at one point, then there is equality everywhere. Uh, and the question was, uh, I can believe that if there is equality at one point, there is equality on the, on the irreducible component containing this point. But how? to pass from uh, one irreducible component to the other. And, and that's, so that's, that's an excellent question. So that's precisely the point. So, um, it, it's, so, so I, I'm sorry, I need to, to write down something to answer this question. So. <laughs> so in terms, Uh, 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 fundamental lines. <coughs> um, this is a statement saying, okay, so, so, so we have some xA and so yA 
uh, and this contains R A, and then there is a point X such that there is an equality. Uh, and so we deduce Equality on the irreducible component. So now, how do we pass from this irreducible component to the full space? And the point is that x sigma times so y sigma maps isomorphically to this um, to this uh, uh, module. And I really have a containment on that space as well. But this is a highly, this is a highly non uh statement because, as I uh, mentioned, but probably too briefly, it's not true that either of these of these parts map to these parts. But um, the way the the error term cancel. So a, a, a more conceptual, a more conceptual way to say this, to answer the question, how do you pass to the other reducible components, is to think of periodic interpolation. So where should I look at here? Here, I want. Because yeah, here, because, because, because okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, is to think about periodic interpolation of the local Langlands correspondence. So it, it's fairly easy to periodically interpolate the local Langlands correspondence on an irreducible component. But thanks to the result of Emerton and Helm, and Helm and his co-author, uh, Gilles Moss, we know that we can actually interpolate the local Langlands correspondence on the full space. And that's exactly what I do. So that's what, exactly what I make use of. So at, at the point of intersection, there is nevertheless another factor, but which is not defined uh, as a determinant. Or, and, and that's how I pass from one component to another component. And this is hidden in, uh, in this I item. Intersect with another, or I mean, it's what so about the is connected, right? So, I mean, oh, it's connected. <laughs> no, so, so you need to go through intersections. To one component well, to I mean, um, if I were really moving in a bottom-up way, I guess so. But in fact, you can uh, reverse the direction and pull directly <laughs> the result. I mean, you construct you construct your automorphic representation over the full space, and then you specialize. So, but but I mean, part of it is that you can specialize at point of intersection. And at point of intersection, it does interpolate in a non-obvious way, but it does. Yeah. So this interpolation, by the way, is, on, is only known for GL2 and GL3. Yes, yes, yes. But you are in GL2. So yeah, so, yeah. Uh. Okay, other questions from Beijing? No questions? Okay, that'd be all for Beijing. Thank you. Questions in Okay, so if not, let's thank the speaker again.